Good afternoon. Welcome to Midcap Radar. I am Reema Tendulkar. With me is Sonal Bhutra. This is a historic day for our market. Let's run you through the headlines on top of the show. The Midcaps outperform larger pairs as Nifty and Sensex scale record high levels intraday, shrugging concerns over widespread protests against lockdowns in China. Oil refiners, autos gain, metals take a beating. Positive brokerage commentary boosts Apollo tires. UBS raises target on the tire maker with a buy rating. The brokerage says declining commodity prices may aid margin and expects return ratios to bounce back strong. News flow drives select broader market players like Ami Organics and Sriram Properties higher. Ami Organics surges after a definitive multi million euro pact with Finland's Farmion for a patented pharmaceutical ingredient. Sriram Property gains post the acquisition of Suvilas Realties. Upbeat management commentary gives Metro Brands a fillip. The management tells CNBC TV18 the footwear retailer is confident of achieving EBITDA margin of 30 to 31 percent as the premiumization theme plays out. Paytm holds on to gains even as RBI asks its arm to reapply for a payment aggregator license within four months. Morgan Stanley has an equal weight rating on the stock as the management sees no material impact on its operations. All right, those are the top headlines and the mid-cap stocks that are in focus. Of course, the big headline today is Nifty at that record high mark. Right now, it has come off from those levels, but still comfortably sitting at that 18,596 mark. Interestingly, Reema, we were talking about the global update today. SJX Nifty was indicating a 100-point downtick for our own markets, but the decoupling theory worked again, and here we are with gains of around 84 points. Uh, important to see whether we sustain this rally, we consolidate all these levels, or this is the time when we see some profit booking. But for now, of course, banking index, we have the Nifty continue to be at a higher level, and mid-cap index, that is 1,500 points away from the highs. But today, it's doing well, up around 5 tenths of a percent. Absolutely. You know, in the past, whenever our markets have got to all-time high levels, it's been in tandem with the rest of the global yes. markets. There's always been this global synchronized rally. But this time, we're the only markets, a large market, which is trading at all-time mm -hmm. high levels. The rest of the markets still have some distance. Yes. In that sense, India's earning performance, its stronger growth, the macros that we've been talking about for the last couple of days, strong retail inflows, and now the you know pickup that we've seen in FI inflows, all that is contributing to taking our markets to all-time high levels and the sharp decline in crude prices today. A seminal decline is also aiding to the momentum. So clearly, the bulls are fully dominating the Lao Street today. They are very much in control. And mid-caps have started outperforming over the last couple of sessions. So straight away, let's get to our segment, Mid-Cap Movers. Vivek is here to take us through the mid-caps that are moving around in trade. Vivek? Well, good afternoon. Another day of outperformance as far as the mid-cap or the broader end of the markets are concerned. Uh, you know, what we are looking at first is the volume buzzer stocks that are trading on higher volumes, especially when you're comparing it to the 5-day or 10-day average. First on our list is GICRE, today moving up on very strong volumes. MSTC, now this particular stock is seen as a second derivative beneficiary of the impending scrappage policy and today moving up very strongly on very high volumes. Uh, GIC housing in another stock today after quite a while has seen a very sharp surge. RVNL continues its up move. The stock has almost doubled uh, when you're talking about this from the October lows. And Fusion Microfinance, you know, the recent stock listing doing very well for itself in today's trading session. Uh, moving on to another pack today, you know, the IT stock pack actually gave quite a bit of an uptick in last week's trading session. And you know, this particular week, we're actually seeing a very strong start by mid-cap IT stocks. So Ramco Systems up almost 15% persistent, also moving up on strong volumes. And Tanla Platforms today has bounced back very sharply from the recent lows. Uh, on the other hand, especially when you're talking about the stocks that are losing in the session, it's largely profit booking that's taking place. Uh, Fino Payments Bank, after two continuous sessions of uh, you know a strong gains, even ITD, you know, very sharp up move on Friday, today cooling off a little bit. Data Patterns and West Coast, all of them are the stocks that make up the losing pack. All right, Vivek, thank you so much for joining us with that update. It's time to get a technical check on the markets. Ashish Kyal of Wave Strategy is joining us now. Ashish, good afternoon. Thanks a lot for joining us. Uh, well, record high on the Nifty. What are you suggesting your clients? What are the levels to watch out for? Uh, absolutely. So this is a, a big day when Nifty has finally turned the lifetime high because we can see Bank Nifty did that earlier, Sensex did that, but Nifty did it today. And that's a very positive sign. Uh, what is also grew, uh, good to see is that the breadth is improving. We can see some contribution finally from the mid cap and the small cap space. Both the indices are now outperforming, which is not, which was not there earlier. So it looks like there is a lot of catch up that to be done from by the mid cap stocks. 
and on the index i think the next level to watch out is going to be somewhere around 8830 which is again level that i keep a track on so 8830 is where i will be getting little cautious of booking profits rather and as of now this market is buy on dips any dip that you get towards that 18550 use that as an opportunity to buy with 18450 as a stop loss and aiming for around 18800 level Okay, so buy right now, especially if the markets give you an opportunity to enter around 18,550 and then book your profits around 18,830, right? Absolutely. Okay, so you still see about a 250 point upside from here on. Uh, Ashish, afternoon, individual stocks? Uh, the first stock on the radar and giving a good breakout is Delta Corp. After a long time, we are seeing it, is, it was consolidating in a range. Uh, giving a good breakout in today's session up by nearly I think four five percent already but there is a potential for stock to continue to move up volumes are picking up so, and the pattern target comes to around 249 on the upside so Delta Corp long positions can be created here stop loss is 224.50 target is 249 and the next stock on the buy side is going to be Mahanagar gas we can clearly see the entire sector is buzzing around and MGL is giving a good move on the upside after forming a low around 845 levels and uh, from here the target for MGL is around 965 and stop loss can be maintained at 870. All right Ashish thanks a lot for joining us so that is a technical check on the markets but uh, now we'll slip into a short break up next we'll be joined by K Ajit Kumar. Welcome back. You're still tuned into Midcap Radar on CNBC TV 18. Well, Suprajit, Suprajit Engineering is on our radar. Company delivered a mixed second quarter. The stock is down over 20% this year so far. Know that brokerage Nirmal Banksy's strong order book and price hike supported its quarter two performance. To discuss this and the outlook going forward as well, we are now joined by K. Ajit Kumar Rai, who's the founder and chairman at the company. Mr. Rai, good afternoon. Thanks a lot for joining us. Always a pleasure speaking with you. Well, quarter two is done. Now we are into quarter three and almost uh, halfway through as well. Can you tell us what have demand trends been like and the margin compression that we saw in quarter two? Are you seeing some sort of improvement there as well? Good afternoon and thank you for having me on your channel. Um, the first half results are behind us. Uh, actually, we had a very good growth of nearly 28% on standalone as well as nearly 60% on the consolidated basis, thanks to the LDC acquisition. In terms of the order book, I would say that uh, the order book continues to be strong. You now, first half has been a strong growth for us. Within the uh, automotive basket, the two-wheelers are having some headwind, whereas uh, passenger vehicles and the light commercial vehicles, as well as heavy commercial vehicles, are all showing good traction. The aftermarket is very strong. We have had a very good first half, and we expect that to continue for the second half as well. The second half outlook for the automotive industry within India is pretty strong as well. Although two-wheeler may have some headwind, but overall we see that this would be a good uh, second half. On the global front, I think uh, the uh, OEM business is uh, somewhat under stress thanks to various reasons, China lockdowns and China slowdowns, Europe war, North American you know, component issues. There are multiple issues are there in terms of the global business. However, LDC has had a good, good quarter and had a, continues to have a strong growth option. Along with Suprajit Automotive and Suprajit Europe, our original two entities which were doing export markets for global automotive side, has done pretty well and continues to have a strong market. In terms of the margins, uh, you know, we, our guidance has been that on a consolidated basis without, of course, LDC, was between 14 to 16 percent. The first half we have done about 14 percent and we are within our guidance in terms of the margin performance. Okay. Although on a consolidated basis with the LDC, it has come down a little bit because LDC is undergoing the usual restructuring and cleaning up that happens in any new acquisitions in the first okay. year. Okay, so you've also cut down guidance for LDC. Let's talk about that by 5 to 7 percent this time around. Um, why, when do you plan, uh, why, why, when do you think you will see recovery here and what is going wrong here? Like what led to this revenue guidance cut for you? Basically, LDC operates in, you know, uh, Europe, US and uh, Chinese markets. And we know very well uh, global automotive markets are down. US and Europe has, will have a negative uh, numbers uh, in terms of the overall uh, production for various reasons. I mean, there are chip shortage issues, there are the war issues, there's the economic stress in both the places. 
Whereas in China, there is obviously been a slowing down thanks to COVID restrictions and other issues that is taking place in that country. So these are the three major markets where we operate under, under LDC. The second very important point is, despite this uh, headwind, our underlying business has been strong. In the reporting currencies, we'll continue to do what we have said in the beginning. But however, whether it is Chinese yuan or uh, you know uh, Hungarian foreign or uh, you know Mexican pesos and in euros, they have all depreciated in terms of currencies by ten to thirty percent. So in a reporting currencies, we have taken as dollar. So, but the underlying business remains strong. And because of the conversion from a weaker currency to dollar, when we are reporting, we said that it will you know, come down a little bit. It is not really a, uh, what I would say, reflection on the underlying performance of this business. Okay. So what could be the consolidated margins, including LDC? You gave us a margin guidance, X of LDC at 14 to 16%. Yes. So what yeah. will it be? Include LDC yeah. Yeah. Uh, as I said, you know, our guidance to the market has been ex-LDC. LDC has been just acquired. So it will take a year to stabilize uh, in, in LDC. For this year, we have said we will be probably basically at LDC a margin neutral, whereas next year we should be in the positive ground. So considering that LDC is about 30-35% of our business, for next year we'll certainly be in the, uh, even on the consolidated basis, we'll be in the double digits. For the first half of the year, we have been at a 10% debit margin, including LDC. So that is about margin outlook, including LDC and without LDC as well. Let's talk about your Phoenix Lamps division as well, uh, Mr. Rai, because you've guided for improvement in margins beginning third quarter of FI23. Uh, what will this be led by? Are you taking price hikes? Because you did speak about sharp uptick in input costs. Are those coming down? And what is the margin improvement that you're looking at, uh, looking at? if you can give, a, give it to us in quantitative terms? In terms of uh, Phoenix Lamps division, uh, there are one, two issues. One, of course, is the domestic market and the outside of India market, which is basically our two subsidiaries out of Europe. Now, in terms of India market, we have been able to pass on decent price increases and, you know, not up to our expectation probably. But the major problem has been the, the precious gases, which has sort of shot up by something like 40 to 50 times in the last one year. Again, thanks to the war in the Europe from where most of these... Uh, gases uh, originate from. So that had affected, it was not very difficult to pass on. So our margins had come down and uh, we had guided that the, also that there has been a lot of demand supply issues. The supplies have been more than the demand and there is going to be a situation where margins will be under stress for some time. So in the last two quarters, we have seen that we have seen the bottom of these margin pressures. And in this quarter, we have also guided that we will start improving the margin. It is a process. I don't think it will jump up in one quarter. I think we have been at about 4-5% EBITDA margin in the last quarter, if you really look at it, uh, on a consolidated basis within PLD. That will probably, you know, up by a couple of percentage points in this quarter. And I'm sure it will further improve as we continue to consolidate our business. We have also said in our business update that we are consolidating and restructuring a part of our business to make sure that we further improve the margin. So, I would say next year we'll also go there to double digits in PLD as well. Okay, so Phoenix Lambs division's margins will improve to double digit in FI24 versus the current levels of 4 to 5 percent as uh, the entire um, you know, transition and the turnaround that you are planning gets uh, completed. Can you talk about your non-automotive business? That's also grown pretty well in Q2, up 25 percent. Um, what's driving it? Is it sustainable? Yes, I think, uh, again, uh, our non-automotive business has uh, strengthened in the last quarters. Uh, we have been able to, you know, one of the good things about this LDC acquisition, that LDC also has got a strong non-automotive business and a strong engineering and business development group. Now, together between our own, uh, you know, Westcon as well as the LDC division, we are now becoming a very strong player in the non-automotive business. In this business, I've always said in various channels that the consolidation of suppliers will happen and the strong will become stronger and who has the right you know, product mix as well as the footprint will get more business. I think that's what is happening in the non-automotive business. We continue to garner new businesses. Of course, again, I must add here that global headwinds exist and they persist. Despite that, we are winning new contracts and we will continue to grow that business.
All right, okay, Mr. Rai, thank you so much for joining us and outlining what's happening in different segments, in different geographies, and what the outlook for the business as well is. That's the word coming in from Suprajit Engineering. For now, we'll slip into a break. On the other side, we'll focus on Via Tech Wabag in a special segment, Midcap Spotlight. Welcome back. Hovering around 18,600 on the Nifty. Uh, this is a momentous day for our markets. The benchmark indices have scaled record levels after a gap of more than 400 days. So after a long period of consolidation, the markets are back to its all-time high levels. Mid-caps are doing well. The mid-cap index is up 0.6%. But in that, let's tell you what's on our mid-cap spotlight today. Vivek is joining us and he's watching out for VA Tech Vabag. Uh, Vivek, why is that? Well, uh, good afternoon. You know, that's right. You know, so Watek Wabag today is in focus. Uh, so what's actually the company has done? Two important developments and Nomura also has reacted to these important developments that the company has uh, informed. So the first thing, of course, you know, the company has managed to go ahead and secure long-term financing. And this is a 2,000 crore working capital loan from Asian Development Bank that the company has spoken about. Now, the loan tenure is of 63 months and what, uh, you know, analysts have indicated that these are at very reasonable terms. So that is one positive development that the company is enjoying. Second thing, you know, what actually happened as far as Q1 and Q2 was concerned was the fact that the company had indicated that it had a significant Russian project, you know, worth over 1,000 crores. And this particular project was stalled because of the geopolitical developments that happened in that particular part of the world. However, what we now understand is that uh, this particular project has resumed execution and the company has managed to establish payment mechanism in US dollars. And this particular project is exempt from any global sanctions on Russia. So Nomura has reacted on this particular development. They have re retained their buy stance. You know, they've raised the target price on the stock to, to 480 rupees a share. And what is it that they're saying? They're saying that the first half of FI23, the company actually saw the impact of some uh, developments like the commodity price rise, especially steel. And this was something that the company saw impacting its EBITDA margin in an adverse manner. However, they believe that some of these uh, uh, you know, negative tailwinds that the company actually saw is now turning positive, and which is why they've continued to maintain their buy stance on the stock. All right, Vivek, thank you so much for joining us. Well, IPO season continues, and today we are going to be talking about Dharmaj IPO. Now, remember, it has received 0.6 times subscription so far in the day. To Just to give you a sense of what the uh, what the company really does, well, the total issue size is 251 crore rupees, out of which offer for sale is 35 crore rupees, and fresh issue is 216 crore rupees. The usage of the fresh issue will be for funding working capital requirements. The company will also be using it for general corporate purposes and upgrading and expanding current facilities of the company. It is an agrochemical company and is into manufacturing, distributing and marketing of herbicides, insecticides, microfertilizers and antibiotics as well. And it caters to both the segments, be it the B2B segments and the B2C segment as well. Uh, it exports also to a lot of countries. It exports to more than 25 countries like Latin America, East African countries, Middle East and Far East Asia as well. If we talk about the revenues of the company now, it has been consistently doing well. Uh, from levels of 200 crore rupees in FY20, it has gone to levels of 394 crore rupees, almost doubled in FY22. The EBITDA margins has improved as well from 9% in FY22 to 12.2% in uh, third uh, three months of FY23, that is. And profits at that 18 crore mark is uh, something which is more than what we saw, uh, is more than half of what we saw in FY22 as well. So good financial performance by the company as well. If we talk about the valuations now, it is coming in at 27.9 times, that is FY22 earnings, which is in line with the agrochemical major that is Rallis. So it is actually on the higher side as far as the sector average is concerned. India pesticides is around 18.5 times, Iran by around 10.8 times, Bharat Rasan at around 24 times. So it is largely more on the expensive side. One of the risks that the company has mentioned in its DRHP is that lenders have imposed certain restrictive conditions on their financing arrangements. and. They have enlisted that as well on a debt of around 66 crore rupees. So that is something we'll need more answers to. But good financial performance and we are talking about uh, reasonable, not reasonable, but slightly expensive valuations as well for this company. Uh, so yes, 0.5 times uh, is the subscription so far. Let's see what happens in the next two days. Absolutely. Margins for the company have been improving, as you pointed out, right? In FI20, it was 9%. In FI21, it was 10.3%. In FI22, it was 11.1%, which is further increased to 12.2% in Q1 of FI23. Uh, uh, that's not in rupees crore, that's actually in a percentage term for the operating profit margin. Uh, we'll uh, wrap up on mid-cap radar. Thank you very much 
for uh, joining in. We've got Inside Out. Yes, Inside Out uh, when we return, so stay tuned.